let's talk about treatment. What's the basic stuff that we do for someone with bipolar illness? And well, let's start with that. And I'm sure there's- Well, good. Well, I, I think bipolar disorder is such a fascinating and wonderful illness to treat, uh, partly because we see such wonderful results. And so many of our patients get well and stay well for most, if not all, of their life. And that is why in bipolar disorder, the key word is prevention, even not treatment. Uh, all of our treatments should be aimed at a long-term plan for preventing recurrent episodes of mania and depression. Because without treatment, this is an illness that leads to recovery, but then relapse. And recovery, but then relapse. And we know this from books that were written a hundred years ago before there was no treatment. And people would get well after a year or two of terrible depressions or terrible manias and be well for a year or two or five and then have another episode. So when a patient is well, we need to tell them we need to prevent the next episode. And so I will tell you a little bit about the medicines that we use, but I want you to think in terms of long-term and prevention, and that's how we need to think. And of course, the classic medicine is the simple ion lithium. And lithium is an element that we have in batteries and in airplane wings, but it is also given orally. It's a natural compound and it given orally, it treats and prevents symptoms of bipolar disorder. And amazingly, both the manias and the depressions. And even more amazingly, lithium and most of the other treatments for bipolar disorder have little or no effect on normal personality or on the patient's thinking and feeling and range of moods, range of normal moods, interactions with other people, happiness, sadness, sexual abilities during the well phase so only prevents the illness, the manias and depression. And uh, what's interesting about that to me as I'm hearing it is that one of the big complaints people have about antidepressant medications is that they can blunt their emotions, they can feel numb or disconnected, have sexual dysfunction or thinking problems. But it sounds like you're saying that lithium doesn't create that. There are some complaints, but they're about the same as in the control group of people taking uh, placebo or uh, uh, or vitamins or something that would not be expected to give those complaints. So people can feel blunting uh, in our daily lives, but it doesn't seem to be really caused by, by uh, lithium. Uh, and uh, uh, lithium has its side effects, some medical side effects. It can have side effects on the thyroid can have side effects on the kidney, it can have side effects on causing uh, loose uh, bowels and tummy aches. And so it's not a perfect drug, even if it is a natural compound. But many people benefit from it, and it's hard for me to tell you if it's 10 or 20 or 50% of bipolar patients. It tends to be familial. If there was a first degree relative who had bipolar disorder and was helped by lithium, lithium would be a good thing to try if you have bipolar disorder. But not every bipolar patient responds. Patients who, bipolar patients, uh, who have side effects with lithium can be tried on a range of compounds, range of medicines, several of which, interestingly enough, derived from compounds used to treat epilepsy, a brain disorder involving a change in the electrical rhythms of the brain. And these compounds like valproate and carbamazepine 
are also very effective in preventing depressions and manias with few side effects on normal personality, although they do have a range of physical side effects that need to be managed by a doctor.